Hey, welcome back to the channel. It is great to see you here. Today, we're answering a question which a subscriber posed, and that is why I use Sigma lenses for all my video production. So let's dig into that. First off, I want to say thank you very much to all the new subscribers and everybody who's commented on previous videos. I really do appreciate the feedback and also getting involved and asking questions like this one. So previously, I used to use just Canon lenses. That was all I had in my bag. And now, my entire video production kit consists of well, my Canon cameras and three Sigma lenses. So back in the day, Sigma lenses used to be the budget option and the build quality wasn't great. The optical quality tended to be on the cheaper side, so you'd get a lot of spherochromatism and not much sharpness, and pretty poor contrast. And then something changed and the business suddenly went in the direction of creating very high quality, well-built lenses with superb optics. And this really kind of started with their art series lenses, which I think the first one was the 35 millimeter 1.4. And this is a lens that people rave about. I've never used it myself, but it's one of those that they said really forced the other manufacturers to step up their game. Since then, Sigma's art series have just been, well, fantastic, each lens after the next. I'm gonna take you through the five reasons why I use Sigma lenses for all my video production. And I'll give examples talking about, well, referring to the ones that I have here. I'm actually shooting on one right now, the 28 millimeter f1.4. So yeah, I'll, I'll show you in B-roll what that one looks like. Why do I keep throwing my lenses up and down? I'm just asking to be dropped. So the first reason why I love Sigma lenses and why I use them is I run my own business. I pay for everything myself. They're reasonably priced and excellent value for money. When you compare Sigma lenses to first party lenses or first party brands like Canon or Nikon, when you compare those two, the prices aren't even close. The Sigma lenses are way cheaper and much more affordable. So for example, the same price that you could get a Canon 24 to 70 f 2.8 version two, you can get the Sigma 24 to 70 f 2.8 DG. You can get that and you could get another lens to go with it. So you could get two lenses, two fantastic lenses for the same price as that single one. So it ends up being really good value and you get more options. Or you could save that money and put it more into your camera gear. So it gives you a lot more flexibility and options if you have that more reasonable price. Not only that, oftentimes you get a lot more with them than you would with the equivalent Canon gear. So let me give you an example. This is the Canon RF 35 millimeter f1.8 and this is how it arrives. It arrives in this box and you open it up and you get some warranty information and you get a lens. See, there's nothing else in that box. You get a lens wrapped up in some bubble wrap. And in a plastic bag. And there's your lens. And you get caps on the front and the back. You don't get a lens hood. There is a lens hood on here, but that's one that I had to buy separately. And I couldn't even find one by Canon. I had to go for a party because the Canon ones are impossible to find. So you get a lens and that's basically it. So now let's take a look at a lens that was pretty much the same price as that Canon lens. Okay, it was a little bit more expensive, but it is an f1.4 and it was only hundred pounds more expensive. And it's weather sealed. It's actually on the camera, so again, yeah, can't show you just yet, but included in there, you get warranty information. You get a strap for the case that comes with it. So the lens comes packaged up in that Nice and secure, nice and safe, and it's a good place to store it if that's how you want to store your lenses. But you get a lot more for the money with the Sigma lenses. Oh, and you get a lens hood included in the price. And it's a good quality lens hood because it has a, has a button that keeps it locked in place. Sigma lenses, cheaper than the Canon or Nikon equivalents, and they come with a lot more 
in the box. So a lot more bang for your buck. Following on from that, to dispel any worries about them not being reliable or losing reliability over time, you can get a three-year warranty, as you can see there. You can get a two-year warranty with some lenses, a three-year warranty with this lens. Peace of mind. Second is their build quality. As I mentioned before, Sigmas were not well known for their construction quality. Their build quality wasn't great, they'd be really plasticky, and they just didn't feel very professional in hand. Often when you're shooting you can't pay too much attention to how delicate you are with your gear, or you might be tired at the end of the day and you want to just throw it into the car and you need it to be able to survive that. Yeah, it's not how you should be treating your gear, but sometimes you do, and sometimes you drop it. So you want to have that sense of security that comes with good build quality. And just as an example, this is the 24-70 f2.8, and it feels like a tank. It is heavy, which might turn a lot of people off it, but I like that it is heavy. Metal construction, yes there are some plastics in the construction, but they feel very rugged. Build quality on the new Sigmas is excellent and very reassuring. This, yeah, nothing feels loose or nothing feels loose or, you know, that clicks on nicely. Nothing wobbles. It doesn't wobble when it's on your camera. I've had some Canon lenses that do wobble on the front of the camera. Still talking about good quality construction. A lot of the newer ones have a weather sealing on them. So this one does. The 18 to 35 millimeter does not have weather sealing on it, but the 28 f1.4 does have weather sealing and it's got actually one of the best weather sealing specifications I've seen on a lens. So really good quality weather sealing on these lenses and just great, great build quality. Next up in what I really like about Sigma lenses is you get options that you don't really see in other manufacturers or at least you didn't see them in other manufacturers until Sigma had done it. This is probably the finest example of that. This is a zoom lens specifically made for Super 35 or APS-C cameras. It is the 18 to 35 f1.8. When it was made, it was the brightest zoom that had been done. It held the title until Panasonic released their f1.7 zoom, but it's a very odd focal length to have for a zoom, but that is because it is designed for a Super 35 sensor. So 18 to 35 equates to about 28 to 50, 55. Not the most useful focal range out there, but what this lens meant was that people who had APS-C cameras or Super 35 cameras weren't missing out on that fantastic shallow depth of field and bright aperture that was previously only available to full frame users. It was a premium lens made specifically for Super 35. Hats off to Sigma for doing that because it was well, it was more inclusive, wasn't it? On top of that, this lens turned out to be one of the best lenses. It produces stunningly sharp results. Incredible bokeh. It is fantastic all around when it comes to image quality. It brought that to Super 35. The lens that I'm filming on right now is a 28mm 1.4. And again, there's not many 28mm 1.4s out there, especially not ones that are weather sealed. Then there's also the bazooka lens, which again, I'm not sure if anybody else makes a lens like this apart from Sigma, but they're doing crazy things and they're doing beautiful things. So I got to respect them for that. I'm British, so I like a plucky underdog. The fourth reason why I really like Sigma lenses is you can actually change the mount. If I were to change camera systems completely, I could send this off to Sigma and have them change the mount to whatever I'm moving to. I know that if I found a good lens that I really like and it's reliable, I take care of it, that I can use it across many different systems. And as somebody that's bought and sold equipment many times over and you make a loss every time that you do that, that's quite reassuring to know that I'm not going to have that issue in the future. Yeah, it'll cost a little bit extra to get things adjusted, but in the grand scheme of things, I think that's worthwhile having. Good luck getting Canon to change their lenses to a Nikon mount. So everything up to now has pretty much been preamble because the main reason why I shoot with Sigma lenses, reason number five, is the image quality. <laughs>
ever since that 35mm f1.4 Sigma art lens, the quality that has come out of Sigma lenses has been incredible. YouTube is awash with comparisons between Canon's 24-70 f2.8 and Sigma's, and before that would have been, well, a bit of a joke, whereas now it, they genuinely compete and in some ways outperform the native glass. These new Sigma art lenses are sharp across the frame. They have incredible contrast, very little distortion, and they really control spherochromatism pretty well, particularly this 28mm f1.4. For an f1.4 prime, it's pretty impressive how well it controls color fringing. And yes, a lot of modern mirrorless cameras do include some processes and software that suppress color fringing or spherochromatism. However, if you're shooting in RAW, you're not going to get that. You're gonna to have to do it in post. So to have lenses that do this internally is way better. A lot of Canon lenses that are being released have severe distortion and terrible spherochromatism because they know that their cameras can fix this issue in software. And while this might be helpful for their smaller lenses like the 16mm f2.8, keeping it as small as possible means that you're going to have wild distortion and not necessarily the best optics. You don't want your camera to be fixing that problem for you or have to rely on your software to do it because that will always sacrifice detail. So it's great that Sigma are focusing on optical quality and not relying too much on in-camera software. That's good. Another reason why I really like this 24 to 70 f2.8 from Sigma is it is par focal, which means as you zoom in and out, it doesn't change focus. That is a kind of feature that you would only find in a lot more expensive cinema lenses. And so for a photography lens, that is brilliant. So comparing this to the Canon 24 to 70 f2.8, this one is cheaper, it's par focal, it has built-in optical image stabilization, and I've owned both lenses, I can't tell a difference in the image quality. Maybe side by side you'll notice, but your clients aren't comparing two lenses side by side. They're looking at the final product. And the quality that comes out of this lens is incredible and definitely professional results. So remember, just because you don't have the budget to buy all of Canon's f2.8 zooms doesn't mean that you're not going to be able to get incredible image quality. Because for the same price as one of those zooms, you can get two fantastic quality Sigma lenses. And that is why my video production bag has just Sigma art lenses in it. The 24-70 f2.8, the 18-35 f1.8, and the 28mm f1.4. Like I said, it used to be the case that these third-party manufacturers, their lenses just weren't up to scratch, and that is definitely no longer the case. So when you're shopping for lenses, check out some of Sigma's offerings, in particular their art lenses, because they are all incredible. I'm gonna do a more detailed analysis and review of each of these lenses so you can see them in more detail. If that sounds like something you wanna see, then please do subscribe to the channel. I hope you've found this video useful, and if you have, please give it a thumbs up, put some nice feedback in the comments, and if you want to defend your Canon lenses in the comments, I would love to hear your opinion. You take care, and I shall see you in the next video. Catch you then.